Analyticos, who leads the global business development for consensus, currently co-leading the baseline protocol efforts. Thanks. And uh, prior to that, I was at Oracle for 18 years. Uh, and I, I'd like to joke and say that I used to try to centralize everything, and now I'm trying to fix that. So um, I do not have any prepared slides. However, I, I do have um, quite a bit of material to cover um, in terms of the baseline protocol, um, its adoption, um, what we're seeing in terms of trends, things of that nature. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, base ledger and, and how that's kind of starting to evolve and, and how we're seeing it being used. Uh, and then kind of wrap up a little bit with uh, what we're starting to see from a patterns perspective with respect to the baseline protocol um, and, and some of these recurring use cases um, and kind of uh, adjacent spaces uh, starting to leverage the value of the baseline protocol. So let me go back and, and kind of level set. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar this audience is, uh, given the, the great nature and then what Connor and Web3 and Chris and Nancy do with, with these meetups. Uh, so the baseline protocol, and you can get to it at baselineprotocol.org or baseline-protocol.org. Uh, that's the landing page. Gets you access to the docs and the GitHub repo and all that kind of stuff. But the baseline protocol itself is an open source and public domain standard uh, for enabling companies to, to synchronize systems of record um, using blockchain technology. Uh, the reality is the design pattern uses up many other technologies as well. Uh, peer to point to point messaging, uh, zero knowledge proofs, uh, and also happens to use some blockchain. The specification uh, does not um, dictate which blockchain to use, uh, but as you start to get in and, and you know, follow the dogma, if you will, um, of synchronizing these systems, um, the whole goal is to, to mitigate silos of information and ultimately to uh, create the last silo, if you will. Um, on a public network, um, Ethereum being the best option at this point in time for many, many, many reasons. You can implement the baseline protocol today with, uh, with any, um, like I mentioned, any blockchain technology, multiple messaging technologies, et cetera. Uh, you can deploy it in either a private or a public network. Um, you know, the, one of the benefits of, of doing it in a private network without uh, starting in the public is that the baseline protocol itself does not put any data on the blockchain. Um, it just puts essentially proofs that the data is in sync. So if you start on a private permission network, uh, exploring the baseline protocol, and you want to move and get all the security and benefits of the public network, <clears throat> it's actually a relatively easy move um, without having to worry about kind of exposing additional data. So uh, that's one of the huge benefits. Now, the baseline protocol has been uh, out and around for almost three years since its public launch um, consensus in conjunction with Microsoft and EY. Uh, it's been lots of adoption and lots of work have gone into it. Um, the version one of the specification was published back toward the end of September and is now being ratified. Um, we recently brought on a new operations manager, Sonal Patel, uh, and she's been doing a fantastic job at kind of organizing the core devs and there's new energy in the core devs. Um, last count I saw a couple of weeks ago, it was over 30 um, active core devs working on various aspects of the specification and improving the libraries and things of that nature. Um, today, they're actually announcing the new technical steering committee. Uh, the vote's been open for a couple of weeks, so uh, we'll see what that brings us. Um, they're actually announcing it concurrently with this, so we'll find out uh, who is on that. If you've been following the, the public news, and if you want to put questions in chat as I go along, feel free. I'll try to watch those. Um, if you've been following the public news, um, Kona, Coke One North America, uh, ServiceNow, uh, and other large companies are starting to, to implement the baseline protocol. Kona is actually going into production with their first 12 bottlers, 12 of 68 bottlers in North America. Uh, service now, and that's for uh, essentially synchronizing the bottling process uh, and the, the purchase of raw materials that go into producing the Coca-Cola product line um, and distributing that out to suppliers. Uh, service now um, is actually implementing the baseline protocol to allow their customers to synchronize service contracts across different instances of service now. So it's kind of an interesting use case in that they're using the baseline protocol to synchronize systems effectively internal to their own environment 
um, but doing it in a way that that still maintains kind of the separation of information um, and the clear delineation of different entities so that there is uh, less concern about mixing data or or you know data leakage and, and privacy and things of that nature so um, we're also seeing the adoption in in, in with respect to the the specification committee um, I should have should tip my hat to Aniso Frank, uh, who's part of the London EEA community, um, and Andreas Freund, who's been a big fan of the space for a long time. Uh, they really led the effort. And I think if you read that specification, you'll see um, it sets a very high bar for how we should be documenting and, and delivering on decentralized system standards. So, um, But it wasn't just them. It was a team of people that participated in that, um, including representatives from SAP, Splunk, uh, Microsoft, DUI, and others, um, and that's kind of a, a leading indicator of what other companies are doing and in leaning into the baseline protocol. There is now a deal flow process in the baseline community, so if you're part of the baseline community um, and a sponsor, um, as net new opportunities come in or, or companies raise their hand to learn more, um, the technical steering committee led by John Wolpert is doing a great job at dispositioning those uh, to the appropriate partners in the community and making sure that the connections are made and that there is no um, kind of impedance mismatch or anything like that. Um, it, it's been really fun it, it, to watch, quite frankly, uh, and, and to see this community grow and the number of members and the activity, um, and it's beautiful. One of the things that we're seeing with respect to, you know, you define a workflow um, in work groups, uh, and then through these workflow and work groups, information and, and data is uh, exchanged and synchronized. And what we're finding through our work with Kona and, and ServiceNow and others is that, you know, oftentimes there's many, 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 many steps in a workflow. Um, and that requires many, many, many touches of the blockchain for posting your hashes, depending on how many steps there are and kind of what data you're syncing. And of course, with the current state of Ethereum, um, you know, the, the little bit of traffic congestion, if you will, which is great. It's good that people are using it. The, the cost of gas fees. Um, enterprises are challenged uh, by that, of course, because, you know, they, they need um, some stability, uh, the ability to forecast their cost. Um, and quite frankly, many of them are still a little bit leery of touching crypto directly. So the community has started to, to identify this need um, and is starting to uh, roll out and test a new layer two option called base ledger. Um, and this is effectively, uh, as I mentioned, a layer two that allows you to put these intermediate steps of a workflow um, into a, a blockchain that uses uh, fiat for transaction fees, uh, yet node operators can still be paid in UBT, the universal business token for crypto. Um, you know, speeds are higher, obviously transaction costs are lower, um, but the exits states of those workflow steps or those workflow uh, actions are ultimately anchored back to the Ethereum blockchain using zero knowledge and all of that. So uh, you get the security, you get the lookup capabilities and all of that. You don't necessarily have to go all the way back uh, to the root state. Um, what else is coming on there? I mentioned the fact that the base ledger has fixed transaction costs, pay for in fiat. It's still in development. So if you want to get involved, uh, jump over to the base baseline community uh, and get going. Uh, but also what we're seeing over and over again, as we look through like trade finance or service contracts or um, some of the other real world assets is that the baseline protocol is becoming more and more important for creating high quality digital assets. Whether these assets are NFTs, invoices, land titles, what have you, um, purchase orders, the whole nine yards. If something has been baselined, you've got a, a much lower probability of fraud. Um, all of the counterparties have agreed that the information is in sync and there's a lot less kind of dispute resolution that goes on in that. As a matter of fact, um, Kona expects to save $40 million a year on their bottling process, just on the processing in the, the reduction of errors in their invoices. And they do about $900 million a year in invoicing amongst their 68 bottlers. Um, and they're going to cut, like I mentioned, 40 million out just by using the baseline protocol. Now, one of the other things that we're starting to see a lot of interest in, of course, are NFTs. Um, and John Wolpert and part of the baseline community, Andreas and others, um, have recently identified a new pattern for NFTs. They're calling the tree trunk NFT that uses zero knowledge to lock the original kind of in a secure vault. Um, and then the, the children NFTs, if you will, 
um, can track their provenance all the way back to that original, um, prove that it is a copy of the original without being the original, um, and even ro flow royalties back uh, all the way through that, that chain of provenance all the way back to the original token holder. So uh, there's a lot of interest in that, as you can imagine, with the NFT space being so hot. Uh, so another thing to check out. Um, other places we're seeing real world assets kind of being impacted by baseline. Um, and I mentioned this before, of course, are invoices in real estate. You're starting to see companies uh, seeking to baseline their assets so that they can get them into asset pools like the Ave pool or MakerDAO or Centrifuge um, and do it with um, a high quality of documentation, but without necessarily shipping a lot of documentation around, being able to do it in a more programmatic fashion and ultimately a much more efficient and lower cost way. So you'll hear more about this uh, in the coming months. Uh, I have reason to believe that there uh, will be a new company launch before the end of the year that will, will help drive and focus on this. Um, I happen to be a part of that company, so we'll talk more about it hopefully in the future. Um, with that said, I've been kind of prambling on here for a while, Chris. Do you have any questions or, or what do you think? I think it's very good. I always enjoy hearing about baseline protocol and, and, and related uh, because it brings the real world to the blockchain as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I don't see any questions in the chat, but I, I, I could ask a few if you don't mind. Um, yeah, fire away. Yeah, cool. So um, starting with base ledger and, uh, and you describe me as a, a layer two, would you, how would you compare that to other layer twos that we see out there like Optimism, and Arbitrum and, and so on? The first is this is almost specifically for baseline protocol proofs, right? Um, so it's optimized for that. Um, the zero knowledge happens off chain and then uh, the proofs land on chain. Uh, the other is that the transactions are paid for in fiat. They have very low transaction fees um, and you pay for them with you know, old money, uh, not the new magic internet money uh, that many enterprises have a very hard time dealing with. So um, we believe that this will help adoption of the baseline protocol within the enterprise. Uh, they'll be able to leverage the base ledger. Um, you know, node operators that, that want to participate can do so, again, in, in return for like validation and, and staking rewards. Um, so it kind of leverages both sides, if you will, right? Uh, if you're, you're blockchain and crypto savvy, um, you could certainly go that way. Um, the UBT coin is an ERC-20. It, it lives on Ethereum, uh, all of that good stuff. Um, but if you're an enterprise and you just want to you know, box up your proofs and have a system of record, a public system of record where you can access those things um, and pay for them in fiat, base ledger is an op op option for doing that. Um, the specification itself does not uh, dictate what layer two to use, right? So you still have that optionality, um, but it just kind of lays out the design pattern and allows the implementers to choose. Perfect. Um, we have a question in the chat from uh, Fox Crypto Boss. Uh, he's asking, or, or she is asking, which companies are using baseline in production workflows? Kona has started to go into production. Um, I mentioned the the Kona product or project is seeking to baseline their 68 bottlers in North America first, and then more uh, as time rolls on, uh, as they expand the globe, if you will. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Kona. Coke One North America is the IT services arm of the bottlers in North America. Uh, Coke and their bottlers got together many years ago and decided it would be much more efficient if they had a central IT group. Um, so their central IT group, Kona, has been helping to drive this. Um, the first, and they're, they're rolling this out in batches, uh, kind of 12 bottlers at a time. Uh, and the first 12 bottlers, including their largest, um, are starting to roll this out into production now, specifically for the optimization of their, their bottling process and their invoice flow, right? So I'm Coke. I license my recipe to Coca-Cola United, who's their biggest bottler in North America. Coca-Cola United has suppliers for glass and, and cans and you know, fizzy water and sugar and colors and, and all of that, right? And keep in mind, it's not just the single Coke, it's their entire product line. Um, so there's a lot of transactions that go back and forth between, you know, the downstream suppliers, uh, the, the bottler themselves, as well as the distributors as the product is going out. Um, today, that process it takes quite a bit of time, even though it's all done fairly digitally. There's a lot of chasing and following up and confirmation of data and, and values and all of that. So by simply using the baseline protocol, they're able to squeeze that cost 
out of the process. And that's how they're going to save $40 million a year. In addition to that, now that they've got these high quality uh, invoices and they're verified by all the counterparties, um, it opens up kind of new opportunities for them to finance them, uh, whether you, you do fireside supply financing or, or you know any of the different kind of financing capabilities that are out there, um, the higher quality assets are generally producing um, smaller discounts, right? Your loans have lower interest rates, if you will. Um, and because you're, you're, if you're effectively financing an invoice from one of these downstream suppliers and through the baseline protocol, you can demonstrate it's actually Coke's business, right? Uh, that downstream supplier kind of gains benefit of Coke's reputation and you know the value that they're bringing, right? Um, so it, it's awesome, quite frankly. Um, and we're starting to, we hope to start processing the first invoices with Kona by the end of the year. Very good. Uh, do you have a, a take on on some of the other solutions out there that, that sort of market themselves as a multi-party transaction system? Without mentioning names, you can probably think of some. How do you see them competing with baseline? Do they complement each other or are they in direct competition? Yeah, so what we're seeing is the, the, the typical consulting answer, it depends. Um, for some use cases, it's very complementary. Uh, for other use cases, it's it's very competitive. Um, if you're doing traditional kind of business process management, um, a lot of those integrations happen within a company, and you don't necessarily need a blockchain to, to help you with that. Um, however, uh, in the modern times, you know you're you're doing more and more process integration across company. Um, and even across country, right? So US to Europe or, you know, to Asia Pacific. And each of these geographies have very strict data sovereignty rules uh, and things of that nature, right? So it becomes very tricky to coordinate uh, between company, countries or, or entities that are in different geographies. Um, however, the baseline protocol really allows them to do that because you're not um, shipping data. You're not posting data. You're, you're confirming that it's in sync and you're posting the confirmation of that. Um, so it's somewhat kind of arm's length from the actual data itself. So in those scenarios, you know, it's, it's very complementary, right? You could use something like an MQ series internally or even just an Oracle database internally to, to manage your queues and, and do your flows. But as you start to, to, you know, integrate with other business partners in other geographies, uh, the baseline protocol is very complementary to that. Yeah, the, the last thing I would say while we're waiting for questions is that the baseline protocol community is an open community. Um, anyone is welcome to join. Um, you know, they, they depending on who you work for, they will always hit you up for sponsorship. It's it's run through the Oasis uh, organization, which is a venerable standards body. Um, however, you can ignore that and still participate in the community all you like. Um, in order to vote, uh, you need to contribute. So you know, get involved through GitHub, even if it's just correcting uh, typos and, and grammatical errors, things like that. That earns you uh, your voting badge, so to speak. Um, at some point, they're likely to make that an NFT. So hang on to your hat with that regard. Um, and like I mentioned, they just elected the new slate of TSC members today. So uh, I'm missing that announcement to be here with you. All right, fantastic, Nick. Thank you for that very much. Yep. Um, thanks, everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.